think. All right. Welcome to today's class all about time blocking, time blocking, how to use it, how to schedule it, what's most important, how do you break down your day? And um, similar to some of our classes, we've talked about all of us being different, right? When you guys were on the, the life by design or the goal setting classes, um, th there's a big reason why we talk and we say, look, motivation is not created. It's simply pulled out. We all have it in us. It's just dependent upon what we're most motivated by. And here's the, 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 the easiest example I can talk to you guys about motivation. If somebody puts their hands over your face, like your mouth and your nose, what are you going to do? You're going to try to do everything you can do to rip their hands off of your face. That's motivated. That's motivation to live, right? That's like on a very extreme barbaric level. But that's exactly what time blocking and everything is, is um, there's so many, so many schedules, so many events, so many, um, hey, get him over here. Let's say hi. I never met Erica's husband. Oh, He's been summoned. <laughs> hi. What's going on, man? Dan? Not much. Nice to meet you. Put a name to a face. Nice to meet you. Yeah. That's all I want to do is put you on the spot, brother. <laughs> er Erica's rock. Totally I'm comfortable with it right face. now. You can tell. That's <laughs> fine. Oh, if, if, if anybody called my wife out, she would like run like just <laughs> for the hills. She would never have come back, even if she was something. So <laughs> nice to meet you, man. When we all when we get done with this COVID stuff, we'll all have a happy hour somewhere and we'll get together. That sounds good. <laughs> um, but but it's time blocking you guys and, and the way you structure your day is, is very similar to motivation, right? The, the way that I'm going to pull someone's hands off of my face are going to be different than the way Melissa does or the way Caleb does or the way Darby does, right? You know, one of us might kick someone in the groin. One of us might grab something beside us and clock someone over the head. One of us might go straight for their wrist and, and try and twist and turn and do a crocodile roll. Either way, we're all motivated to do the same thing, right? I like to use this base barbaric, this analogy, because a lot of you guys, a lot of frustration, a lot of things that happen when you first start come from everything being coming at you and overwhelming. And you guys, you won't be able to, I, I'm a big Googler. Yeah, I always tell you guys, Google some things. This is something you really can't Google. I mean, you can Google it. You can, you know, um, you can Google best ways to set up a real estate agent's day. What do I need to focus on? And you're going to find hundreds of different answers and it's and it's a lot because we all are different creatures and we all are motivated to do the things in our daily life in different ways so I, I like to use that barbaric example because what you create there is no right or wrong the wrong is using something that doesn't motivate you if you constantly find yourself upset with way your day is struggled or scheduled so you get you get dressed you do your morning routine and this time is time for work. That's that, that first step is different for everybody. But if you constantly look at that time of the day as something that you need to get started with, and that task is, is not something that really motivates you to do, how, how are you going to get started on time? Are you going to do that task methodically? And then are you going to actually end your day with everything that you had on your plate? Because the first task of the day was something you pushed off. And so all of that stuff is what we want to talk about and the tricks and tips and the things that I've learned over these years um, to help you guys. Um, I've said it in a couple of different classes. When I do something or I have to remind myself about something, my personality is absolutely atrocious when it comes to the detail. You guys seen my emails. Um, I had somebody, uh, had somebody email me the other day and basically said, hey, Bruce, like, I can't. I, I, I don't know if you know this, but you can do spell check. And they were trying to be really polite about it. And yeah, Jimmy's laughing his butt off because he's literally watched me ask Mike, hey, Siri, how do you spell algorithm? You know, and, and, and when I'm typing a fast email, I don't do that. Um, and so we all have our own tweaks and niches and different things. And one of the things I learned is since I'm not detail oriented, I have to go above and beyond most people for my reminder system. I have to go above most people for lead follow-up and contacts. You wouldn't believe how many contacts and leads slip through my fingers 
because I, I, I'm horrible. I'm absolutely horrible. But since I know that about myself, we have to develop our own, uh, our own safety nets or fail safes. So we're going to talk about time blocking. We're going to talk about calendars. We're going to talk about to-do lists and, and kind of bring some of those other things that I've talked about in other classes together. But I really, really, really want to hone in on um, this is another kind of topic to sit down with yourself and understand as soon as you drop the ball with something, you need to change your system. Dropping the ball one time, it, it, it could be a fluke, right? Uh, you know, God bless you, Darby. You've had some deaths in your family. Um, stuff like that, that comes up in life. Um, I wouldn't say dropping the ball in that arena causes you to need to change the system. But I will tell you, if you're running kind of your day to day and you drop the ball somewhere and really there's no big outside influences, or maybe it's just an outside influence that just kind of happened, right? You got a brand new lead who is hot to try, started taking up all your time and you forgot to follow up with this other lead. That's what I'm talking about. That's not a big life event. That was just work that came about. You need to stop and, and change your system. So a couple of things that I've done. Um, and, and the ways that I've learned when I drop the ball on something is um, I was just talking to Jimmy about it today. I had a lead sitting on my desk um, at my home office um, with a sticky note. And I noticed that I dropped that ball because that sticky note is part of my reminder thing. So I will put that person in my database. I'll put them on my pipeline. I'll put a sticky note beside it. Um, and that sticky note just kind of sits there and lingers for a while. Well, I put that sticky note on my desk when my wife was in Ohio and I started working back at the office. I dropped the ball because the sticky note was part of what I do at my office, not my home office. I just so happened to do it that day. And so I dropped the ball. It was an $800,000 lead and you know, it's, it's, it's not fun, but the reality is I have to identify where, where, where I went wrong because I, I did my system right, but I didn't do my system in the same setting. That's how far down the path this minutia can go when you guys do this. So give yourself some grace. Let's talk about grace for a second. Um, Melissa, I'll pick on you because you have a kid and that's who I know has a kid. Uh, well, Darby too. Um, what happens and, and what do you do as a parent if your four-year-old, three-year-old, 10-year-old, whatever you guys have, um, forgets to do something, what happens? Go ahead, just, just tell me. What, what happens at your house? Um, I think mine's a little bit too young, so I don't really have that type of stuff. But I just remind her until stuff gets done, like cleaning. Um, so she never really like forgets. Um, but yeah, I just have to keep, keep reminding her. Okay, so that, that's a system, actually. You actually, you have a system. You just, you know that you have to keep reminding her. Now, let me ask you this. Have you, has she ever forgot something that you not, not were frustrated for a while, but got frustrated by? Um, well, not cleaning her room after I tell her numerous times, like that gets really frustrating. Okay. And what do you do about that frustration or with that frustration? Um, generally try to come up with new processes to keep that from happening again. Perfect. And, and I, I venture to say the frustration goes away mm -hmm. and you show her grace and compassion. So we don't, uh, you guys, I don't see you guys doing that enough to yourself. We are, we are new. We are infants in the real estate realm and game. When you drop a ball, it may hurt and sting, but do not let it fester. We are toddlers. We are infants in this game called real estate right now. And so if we have the compassion to give our, our offspring that grace and compassion, we do it with our spouses. I know there's a couple in here that don't have kids, but we do it with our spouses. We do it with our family. We watch our parents give us grace, even in our 30s and 20s and 50s, right? We need to do a better job of that when it comes to time blocking, first and foremost, okay? You're going to drop these balls. You are going to miss out on hundreds of thousands 
of dollars of opportunities. But the key is, is if we dwell on them and we stay frustrated, one, our relationship with our daughter gets tainted, right? Our relationship with our spouse gets tainted. So our relationship with our business can become tainted. So be careful dwelling on it. That stung, right? I didn't follow with an $800,000 lead moving here from Anchorage, Alaska. He doesn't know any other real estate agent, okay? It stings, but it doesn't sting that much anymore because all I have to do is figure out where I went wrong. And I have a lot of practice with that because I've dropped a lot of balls. I'm not very detailed. Um, but some systems and time blocking. I, I call this class time blocking and we always look at like a time frame. Um, that's a portion of it. That's a big part of what we'll look at today. But a bigger portion of it is understanding the time it takes to do something. And, and I see there's, there's two different kind of things that can happen when we time block for something. So before we go into that, does everybody understand as soon as you get frustrated and if something festers with you for a day, a week, a couple of days, take that and turn that frustration into energy to create and manipulate your system. And if you can't get out of your head, because I'll tell you that Bruce, five, six years ago when I first got started, hey Siri, what is 2.8% of 800,000? <coughs> I haven't even done the math. Ooh, I don't like doing the math. 22,400. If you guys are stuck on that, give me and Harry and Jimmy a call. We've been there, right? $22,000. For me, you know, when I look at $22,000, I instantly go, dang, that's a rental property in Ohio. Right. But it's beyond me to dwell on it. What I do is I got to focus and I got to change that energy around to figuring out the system. And so that needed to happen. And that's what I did. And so the next time it happens, I'll have to figure out where I went wrong again. For me, it was just one of the little minutiae that I had. My wife went back into Ohio. I put a sticky note on my desk. As soon as she got back, I started working from the office. And then when I started working, when I did come into my home office, because that wasn't my bunker of work, we'll talk about bunkers too in a little bit. Because that wasn't my bunker of work, I did not look at the sticky notes sitting on my desk. They became background noise because I'm trained to look at sticky notes at the office. Um, and so we got to talk about all this today. So let's, let's jump into time blocking. Let's actually get into the calendar system. Uh, when we talked about life by design, we talked about scheduling. And I am talking scheduling. I'm not talking, hey, I'm going to be taking a week off in August. It's what week? How many days? Saturday through Saturday, Monday through Monday, Tuesday through Thursday. Um, how many of you guys blocked out your personal time for 2021? Okay, that's the first step in time blocking. Gary Keller says it all the time. Only billionaires will block out their personal life first. Everything else falls by the wayside. I will teach you guys to erase and replace. Do you think that billionaires erase and replace? Mm -mm. They schedule their vacations in November, of November, December of this year or last year or whatever you want to call it. And if it gets put on the calendar that they're going to take a two-week vacation in August, they're taking a two-week vacation on that, those days because their schedules and what they do, anything that they need to do, I call erase and replace, it's too much time for them. They're billionaires. They, they're probably, I mean, I heard, I heard the other day that um, um, politics aside, Hillary Clinton gets paid $400,000 when she speaks to universities. That, she doesn't have the time to reschedule those things. She doesn't have time to reschedule her stuff. So we'll, you'll get there. And, I, and I'm slowly, I'm slowly getting there to where there are definitely things now that I won't erase and replace that I used to. But for the first time, get your family stuff on there and then erase and replace it when something comes up. But the key is, is you have to replace it. Do not, do not, do not do what I did. Do what I see a lot of agents do. 
if date night's on your calendar and you got to go show homes on a Wednesday night, then that thing goes to Thursday night. If Thursday night doesn't happen, that goes to Friday night. And if you get into Saturday and Sunday and you can't figure out a way to fit in date night, be careful. You're going down the wrong path. Trust me, you're not living your life by design. Or you and your spouse have a conversation and you decide, you know what? Instead of date night this week and next week, why don't we get out of town for the weekend in three weeks? That's still erasing and replacing, but it's communication around it. Um, so it, first and foremost, it's your family stuff. Second, second, what goes on your calendar second? Any ideas, any thoughts? Go ahead, Darby. Well, Did I mean, other than, other than vacations, like events, like training events, like, I know they always say like schedule in family reunion, mega camp. Um, and why, why is that? Why do they say that that's secondary? You, you've got to leap up on a lot of people in this group today, Darby. I'll probably pick on you a little bit. Okay. Well, why, because, why is that? Well, because those days are time sucking days. Like you cannot get work in during those days. So you need to make sure you get work done either before or after and have it blocked in. Why do you need um, to make sure? Well, I mean, you don't have to, I guess, but then you're not really doing a good job to yourself. So you're so 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 let me break this down. So you're 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 saying, right. um, you know, schedule family reunion. Mm -hmm. So what I kind of hear you saying is is you can't erase and replace that because it happens once a year and those are the days and those are what sets and Kelly Williams International System is not going to change that for you, correct? Right, like there are hard dates. Okay, so what are the, what are the second things that you have to schedule on your calendar? The hard set date. The things that you don't that you don't have control over uh, around what it is, right? Right. Yep. So, uh, events, conferences, um, you know, those the, the the actual already booked and scheduled vacations, right? We talked about mm -hmm. personal stuff, um, and and if you don't have anything booked, just just put it in your calendar, and then do it, um, but. But if you have a vacation booked and, and plane tickets are bought, guess what you're not going to miss? You're not going to miss your plane. Well, if you do, you probably slept in, but you're not going to miss the vacation, right? Mm -hmm. So the second thing that you need to put on there after family time is events, things that are out of your control of when they happen. Second piece. If family reunion or mega camp or um, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's, Tom Ferry's, Brian Buffini's seminars fall on the day that you guys put in for your vacation, then erase and replace right then and there. Like you just got done putting it in your calendar. Just do it again. Just erase and replace. If it's booked, make the decision. Does vacation get canceled or do I go to the Tom Ferry summit? Right. Can I find something different that Tom Ferry puts on on a different weekend? So the second piece is putting into the, basically your, your, your uncontrollables. Okay. Third, it's the third thing you think you guys can think of. Your habits. You keep, keep rolling with that. All right. Not, not necessarily habits, but just uh, the money-making activities. Keep going, Jim. I'm, take, I'm, I'm hitting the space bar. I have to take myself off on mute. I would say the next thing that I would time block after personal time and the events, oh, Brady wants in, um, is going to be when I wake up, when I lead Jen. Um, I have a list of, of activities slash habits for 2021 that I'm going to be tracking. And so I made sure that they have a reasonable spot uh, in my calendar to make sure that I hit those. So yeah, I would say like either habits or. I'll, I'll elaborate. Please. Yeah. Um, when you went with habits, so habits um, are top 20%. So this is where the 80-20 rule comes in. Uh, Brady, you're just joining us. We talked, um, we'll just re recap. We're talking about scheduling things in our calendar. We need to schedule 
family time and the personal stuff. And if we, we need to re erase and replace if something comes up, if it's not booked. The secondary thing is you got to schedule the things that are uncontrollable in your life. Um, you know, if you're planning on going home for your uh, parents' 50th wedding anniversary and that's it's already set, you just you got to put it in there. If you're planning on going to a business seminar and you know the dates and the timelines, you got to put it in there. Um, but the third thing, the third thing, we start to be able to control a little bit. So we control family time, but the uncontrollables, you know, all that. The third thing that we need to put in there is our top 20%. So before we talk about that, or before we go into what those are, we need to learn what the 80-20 principle is. This will really, really, really help you guys when it comes to time management and time blocking. So we're going to spend a few minutes on this. Who has heard of Pareto's principle? Shaking your head, Brady. Right, Italian philosopher, Al Alfredo Pareto, I think is his name. Uh, Pareto's principle is an eight, it's called an 80 20 rule. What, what he started to notice is that there's this kind of this law of, of natural um, need with an 80 20 kind of rule. He started looking at his, his, his city and the cities surrounding him, and he realized that 20% of the population controlled 80% of the wealth. That's what he started with. And then it, so on and so forth, they studied it and they kept going with this 80-20 principle. And in our business, what we need to look at is 20% of our daily activities needs to contribute to 80% of our success. So whether success for you is financial or unit count, um, then it, it, you know, it's up to you, but you've got to base our calendar around our top 20%. So it's the things that we do that should be and have to be non-negotiable for the day to re to make sure we hit 80% of our results. Okay. So you guys have always heard my five, my, you guys have seen this, my five fingers, this is the, this is your top 20%. And this is my flow chart in my head. This is how I distinguish what goes on on my to-do list. If I am, so to close, to get money, we got to be at closings. Closings only take an hour. So this finger is kind of dead, but if you're, if you're not closing on homes, what are you doing, Jim? You're negotiating. You're, you're under contract, you're negotiating on them. To get under contract, what's the step right before under contract? You're going on appointments, right? If you're not going on appointments and you don't have appointments, this finger is kind of twofold. What are you doing? Your lead generating and your lead follow up. Last one. If you're not lead generating, you're not lead follow up. A lot of people tell me that they're working on their, their operations. You don't need any, you don't need any operations unless you have clients. You're working on your skills, scripts, role play, presentations, marketing material, things that will contribute to your lead generation success. So that's our top 20%. That is the things that we need to be doing every single day. So the, the reality is, you guys, is we sometimes do more than 20% of that per day. So if we work 10 hours in the day and we do two hours lead generation, right there is 20%. But those are your top things. Those things have to be put into your schedule no matter what. Everything else goes by the wayside. But here's the coolest part. It's not as complicated as, 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 it, as, it, as it seems. Because if you're not closing and you don't have anything under contract and you don't have any appointments scheduled, you have two things that you can schedule that you control pretty much every time. So every single day, 20% of your day has to be lead generation and role play. That's why we have those time blocks in the calendar, in the PC calendar. Those time blocks, you guys, are just two hours. When you're getting started and you're frustrated with the lack of business, you need to do more lead generation.
and you probably do need to do more, more, more um, description role play. Okay. So um, I don't see that enough. I see a lot of people frustrated that they're not doing business, but that, but then again, on this flip side of things, all of this stuff is on their mind and piling up. The stuff that's on your mind and piling up is the 80%. The 80% is the easy stuff. The 80% is the stuff that we all pretty much, no matter what kind of mood we're in, we're willing to kind of tackle some of it, right? Building our websites, building, you know, building our business cards, you know, those types of things. That's 80%. But that 80% only really ever contributes to 20% of our success. So what happens a lot of times is we get frustrated by the 80% and we continue to focus on it and hack at it and do it because 80% of something seems very large and daunting. But what we don't correlate it with is it's only going to produce about 20% of our business. I've told you guys multiple times. I think I've only ever had probably one person look at my website or actually tell me they looked at my website. And then when I told them, they told me they looked at my website, I had to ask them if they looked at the team's website or my website. They looked at my website and KW populates it for me and I've never touched it in my life. And it's because I know that that's not really what I need to focus on. If I have time, I'll focus on it. Because if I do the methodical lead generation as well as the, uh, you know, honing my skills, I call it sharpening the saw, um, sharpening my tools and my tool shed, whatever you want to call it. If I focus on that for three hours a day, then I've got plenty of time to do those other things. And if I'm doing the right things three hours a day, I will start to have closings. I will start to have appointments. I will start to need to negotiate and work through deadlines and, and objections and things in the contract, right? But until then, I only have two jobs, lead generate and sharpen my skills. After that, everything else is a byproduct. So. That's the 80-20 principle and it works. It really, really works. There's a reason why somebody like me who is so, so undetailed that I still can make it through. But I gotta, know, I gotta recognize my pros and my cons. I'm not detailed, which means I know for a fact I'm gonna stink at lead follow-up, which means I need to make sure I put some fail safes in place, which means I need to make sure that I'm focused on lead follow-up, but I don't take away from lead generation. There's, there's difference there too. On the scale of our hand, lead generation and lead follow-up, they kind of coincide. But I see a lot of us doing one of two things. I, I'm this person. This is me. I'll make more contacts and I'll forget about people to lead follow-up when the fortune's in the follow-up. I wish Michelle Kramer is on here. She's, she's that person too. Um, then you have people like Jimmy. Jimmy is a contactor. Jimmy's a hunter. Jimmy will gladly follow up with mass amounts of leads to hunt them down, pin them down and, and get them to close with them. His trouble is, is he needs to get more contacts because he spends a lot of time following up with leads, right? We all kind of fall into these pros and cons of it. I've never really seen one, one, one person truly understand that it's a delicate balance and truly must work that delicate balance. So goes back to that grace that we were talking about. I just got to give myself grace and I got to understand. I got I to I do better lead follow up. Jimmy's got to give himself some grace and go, dang, I got to get to, I got to get my discipline going and I got to, I got to contact more people. Lead follow up shouldn't take that long. He gets into long winded conversations because he's a conversationalist. If he got into long conversations with other people who weren't leads, he would pull more leads. And then his lead follow up with list would be so overwhelming. He would be forced to have shorter conversations with them. Um, and then, you know, vice versa with me, right? So that's, that's what we need to work on. That's what you have to, just the basis of what you need to know when you guys time block. So let, let, I want to look at my calendar. Ooh, let me look at it first before I show my screen. I struggle balancing between calendars. <laughs> I think I have like three different, Thanks. You can sync them all together, don't you? Well, one's paper, one's on, because I'm still very much a paper person, but then I have Google Calendar. So. Uh, I need to be hosting. That's where I struggle, because, like, 
I'm more of a paper person, but I also know that I should have it in Google. But I don't know. So, so why do you want so bad to only have one? Because I want to like streamline it, but at the same time, like it doesn't always work for me. Like the Google Calendar doesn't always put like my task list of what I want to do versus like, I love this because I could write out my tasks, but then at the same time, it doesn't actually break down my day. Perfect. So I so, get flustered. So you said you have three different kind of things? Well, like, well, I have two calendars on Google. They're already synced together. <laughs> One's for agents services and ones for myself as an agent and then I have this that's like what I need to do for the day perfect so and, and here's here's my question to you is it worth the frustration to have those because those are what I call fail safes is it worth it to have those or is it worth it to drop twenty two thousand dollars out of your pocket Give yourself well, I can't some grace. afford to drop 22000 but at the same time, I get a little flustered. Right, but I'm saying you, that frustration is because you're still probably working on your system, or you need to just subside the frustration, understand it's a necessary evil. That's what I, that's what I had to realize. I had to realize that I like a whiteboard with my leads, but my leads also need to be in my CRM. But I also need to put calendar events in my calendar to call people. And then I also put reminders in my Apple reminder system to call people. Is it frustrating that I have to think through and do all of those things when I just get one lead? Absolutely. I'm done being frustrated by it. It's just a necessary evil. It's just part of the job. It's like being a, you know, I, looked, I used to work retail, so I'll always bring up retail examples. Um, when I worked retail, do you think that I like to clean the bathrooms? Not at all. This is a necessary evil though, because if I didn't clean the bathrooms, then I would just have to deal with complaints from the store and from people going through the store, right? And I'd rather clean the bathroom than deal with complaints. So we always have a necessary evil in any job that we do, which means we either need to embrace the frustration or, or change the system. Um, so yeah, I'm willing to show you guys my calendar here. Um, I became methodical at time blocking, but my time blocking is a little different than what it used to be. My time blocking, honestly, is what you guys see in the PC program. Taking a second here. So this is this is my current schedule for next starting next next week. I show you guys this because I want you guys to see how short and small some of these things are. And I also want you guys to see how, how some of them are, are larger, right? But there's a couple of different things. And I, I haven't learned the calendar. I, I've, told, I've been told like you can, you can do your own colors for different things. I haven't got into all of that, but I do know that for the people out there that are more detailed than I, you can set this up to be where one color is personal, one color is your top 20%, one color is, um, you know, whatever you guys want to name it, right? One, co one color is your BS, one color is, you know, whatever it is. Um, I don't do it. I can kind of just recognize I've gotten methodical about um, how, I, how I label some things. So uh, this Sunday is last, uh, last day of uh, regular season football. I have not done um, enough, a, a great job with my friend, Mr. Jeremy Nichols, to hang out with him. He's been inviting me over to watch football with him pretty, probably every Sunday since, since football started, and I haven't done it. And so I told him I'm blocking that time out, and I'll be doing that with him. Um, then Monday, we jump right back into it. Um, but one of the big things I want you guys to see is, and you guys know for any of you guys that have coached with me, a half an hour coaching call, we can accomplish a lot. If we are account, if we are wait, if we are spending and, and, and having more time than a half an hour, we're probably starting to train versus coach, which is okay in itself. We just need to establish that up front. But what I really want you guys to get at is you guys can accomplish hundreds of things a week 
But sometimes what we're doing is we're putting too much time on one thing. It, it's, it's so, so very true. We always overestimate the time it's going to take us to do something. So I encourage you to, because we, I encourage you to do this, you guys. Schedule less time for something than you think it will take. And I assure you, you'll start to be surprised at how much you actually can get done in that block. A lot of times what people do is they'll, they'll put on here, well, I need to check emails. You know, I need to do my lead generation from nine to 11. Let me just give you a mock thing. here. I need to do my, whoa, 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 whoa. I need to do my lead gen from nine to 11. That is something where you should have a bigger time block because you're just going to do it from step one to step two, right? But now if I say, well, I'm gonna eat lunch from 11 to one, how long does it take you to eat lunch? Are you cooking it? Are you going out to eat? Are you just, are you just getting something to eat? So if you give yourself an hour to eat lunch, you're gonna take an hour to eat lunch, even if you packed your lunch. If you're going out with somebody, then you might wanna block out an hour and a half. But the worst thing I see people do is block out an hour lunch every single day because I can assure you if you block that out, you'll take that time. Now, if you're taking that time for something productive, do it. Like some people will work out for 25 minutes, eat lunch for a half an hour, and they just call it their lunch. That's perfectly fine because you're, you're simply doing something that whole time. What I'm truly getting at is the people that will take an hour for lunch and eat their lunch and it actually takes them a full hour to eat it because the entire time they were scrolling on Facebook or they, you know, they weren't doing something productive. So be careful blocking out too much time for things you've never done. I would say the best thing you can do is to narrow in that time and try and accomplish it in that half an hour. If you initially say, you know what, this is probably going to take me a couple of hours. Set yourself a one hour timer and try to bust through that in that one hour timer. And I guarantee you, if it takes you more than an hour, you'll probably only take an hour and 15, maybe an hour and a half. And then you'll save yourself that two hour versus the opposite way where you just give yourself two hours. You'll probably end up spending the two hours on it. That's why my calendar looks like it. That's why you guys all think I'm so busy. The reality is, is a lot of these things are just reminders. Oops. Put that off there because I wonder what the hell that was doing. Um, a lot of these things are just reminders and a lot of these things are standing things that I need to do. But when you really look through it, I still have plenty of hours in the week. So this is what I really want you guys to challenge yourself with because one of the number one things that I get asked is, Bruce, how do you do so much in, so, in, in the same amount of time that I have? And it's because I became very, very, very methodical with my time. My time is very important. I, I start to scream inside of myself when I see that we're running over 15 minutes after scripts because I usually have something going on at nine o'clock. If I don't have something going on at nine o'clock, I still want to bust out of there because I'm not being methodical with my time. But what I really want you guys to see, now take away all of this seven o'clock stuff. These are my reminders. These are my fail safes. So I have an inspection objection next Tuesday and I have an inspection res next Thursday. I put them out into the seven o'clock timeframe just because when I'm going through my day and I still see that popping up, I know I just don't need, I, I need to not forget about it. Go to mom and dad, <coughs> right? It's, a, it's, a, it's just a reminder. I need to go to my mom and dad's. My dad's having surgery. Um, and I need to help them get the house set up for a surgery. But what I really challenge you guys to take a look at and do, because everyone says, Bruce, you're so busy. I got to challenge you guys. How busy am I really? So let's look at this. If we have eight to about six, let's call it six every day. Eight to six every day. How many hours is that Monday through Friday? Anybody do quick math? Eight to six. What is that? Nine hours? It should be 10. That's 10 hours. Eight to eight, eight to eight would be 12. Eight to six is 10. Eight to six is 10. Cool. So 50 hours a week is my work schedule. 
Okay. That's what my, that's what my calendar pretty well allows for. So 50 hours a week. Now let's go through here one by, I won't do the little 15 minute blocks, but here's a half an hour. Here's a half an hour, one hour. Here's an hour and a half. So two and a half hours over here. Here's an hour, three and a half hours plus another two, five and a half hours plus one, uh, six and a half hours plus three, nine and a half hours plus a half an hour here, half an hour here, 10 and a half hours plus two, two, uh, where am I at here? 12 hours? No, 10 and a half, yeah, 12 and a half hours, 13 and a half hours, 15 and a half hours, plus another four, five, <laughs> So I have a 50 hour work schedule week and I only have about half of that actually scheduled. That's why I get more done than the average bear. Because I look at my, when you guys first saw the schedule, right? And just maybe raise your hand. Cause I don't know if I can see all you guys raise your hand. How many, how many eyes went, holy crap. That's a lot. Okay, not too many of you, good. Okay, some of you. When most people see my schedule, a lot of people say that's a lot. And I challenge them to go count up all the holes because the reality of things is, is I, if I worked another job, this is, what my, this is what my life would look like. It wouldn't be a, a 10 hour scheduled day, but if you did, you know, call it the nine to five, that's all it would be. It would be, the, it would be all the way across. This is why I love our industry. This is why I love our job. I can be busy and, and guaranteed fact, you guys, let's just be honest and real with you. Those are my scheduled things. I still am going to check emails. I'm going to fire off some things. I'm going to work on some things, but guaranteed fact, you guys, I, I, I probably can crush this week in less than 40 hours. And I'm talking crush it. You guys can do the same. We're just giving ourselves too much time to work on things. And we're probably getting up and going to grab coffee. We're probably, um, you know, going to the bathroom, making lunch too long, you know, those types of things. I will encourage you because our schedules can be like this. I could take an hour out of each day and call it meditation. Just <laughs> go watch a show, go sit with myself, go read a book. And I would still be able to accomplish everything. So Time blocking is super important and it has to come down to you being disciplined around it. Discipline is not looking at a calendar saying lunch or lead follow-up time or open house prep setup. Open house prep setup? Jimmy, how long does it take to prep for an open house? About. You talking the day of or are you talking about all in all? I'm just saying, just planning it. You can get most of it done aside from like the circle prospecting in about an hour. Right. Yeah. The plan Is should that. not take more than, an, yeah, I was going to say about a half an hour to set up now, a, to plan an open house about a half an hour. And now that's Bruce, just you. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, looking at your schedule, I know that that's probably only 20% of what you do during the week. Bingo. That's my top 20%, guys. Only half of my days are top 20% activities, typically. And if I venture to say, if I went through here, yeah, here you go. Office meetings, that's just a standing reminder. Go ahead and get rid of that hour. Um, Maps PC role play call, that's my role play call with the PC coaches. Um, I don't go to it every week. It depends on my, my day. Go to mom and dad's. We already talked about that. Maps PC client call, that's for you guys. There's another hour. PC development call, there's something I sometimes do. PC orientation, if the office doesn't have any new people for me to meet with, that doesn't get, that doesn't happen. You're right, Jimmy. Well, and what I'm not, them. what I'm not seeing is like when Steve or Steve or a client calls you or you're dealing with an inspection objection or, or a radon test or uh, there's an emergency in the PC program and somebody calls you outside of that. I mean, this, I mean, I, I does look like a lot and it's funny to hear you say like oh i could put an hour in, in each day to be meditation because that hour each day does get soaked up 
with, I don't want to say reacting to the day because you're choosing to respond to it. Um, it's just unforeseen things, but then also things that uh, just come up every day that just come up every transaction, you know, having that maybe your TC calls you and it's a 15 minute phone call. I mean, things really do add up um, without us realizing it. They do. They absolutely do. And, and that's why for me, the days don't, they don't be, I mean, some days are daunting. Don't get me wrong when I make this statement. Most days aren't daunting. And I find that if I'm frustrated by my day, it's because I didn't plan it accordingly. So let's talk, let's talk some more about, about this, about the schedule too. And about when I, when I do things and when you have the option to do things. So that's a week at a glance for me. What I will typically do is in the morning, before morning huddle, I jump on here and I start to go through and I start to look at my day. I look at my emails that are coming in and flooding in, or maybe I didn't answer from yesterday. And I figure out where am I going to place the 80% that day? And then I plug that in there. So on Monday, on Monday morning, I would most likely have every single one of those gaps filled because I'm going to fill in all of those things. But the key is, is if I don't get to those things, it doesn't matter because my business doesn't falter because of that 80%. My business falters when I don't do the 20%. And, and again, guys, my schedule is a little different. My 20% is you guys. Um, that's, why it's, that's why it's in there. So be careful. Be very, very careful. Some, day, some people plan their day um, in the evening after their day is done. They plan it for the morning. I, I don't do that. Um, my mindset is different in the afternoon than it is in the morning. Sometimes what I thought I was willing to do that afternoon, I wake up not willing to do it um, and things of that nature. So find your, find your stride, find your things. I know a lot of people, a lot of people business plan and look at their weeks on Sundays. Um, I will actually tell you that I, 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 I just, I lack the discipline. I, I kind of wish I would do that. I'd have much bigger focus. I'm more of a wake up, get to my computer around 7.30, and then I look at what the day is going to bring. Um, but that's not the greatest. I mean, that's probably not the greatest way I could be doing it. Um, Sundays are sacred for me. I, I, I really had a hard time doing Sundays because Sundays, I mean, we work Saturdays and we work Sundays. And if I didn't have anything on Sundays, and I started business planning in the afternoon, I really felt like I, like, even if I only did like a one to three or a one to two on a Sunday, I still get down to Sunday night and go, man, I worked all week. So I stopped doing Sundays, especially when I don't have anything going on. I do it in the mornings. But what I'm getting at is you guys have all of these options. I found too much comes up during the week and I get frustrated with the changes. Yeah, exactly. Dar Darby, same thing with me. Um, when I have a plan, the worst way to frustrate me is when I have a plan and the plan doesn't go according to plan. And I get so frustrated because I sit there and I try and control something I can't control. So let's jump into that. A lot of other things that are, we are frustrated about is when we can't control something or I'll give you guys this. When we, when, we, when we don't know what we don't know, I, I really do think there's some validity in those two things. So I'm not saying whenever you're frustrated, it's probably something you can't control. Whenever you're frustrated, it's either something you can't control or something you haven't learned yet. So if it's something you haven't learned yet, get rid of the frustration, give yourself grace just like you do your three-year-old, and go learn that subject, and then quit being frustrated. But a lot of times we fester our frustration. We hold grudges against people and things and ourselves. Quit doing that. That's a waste of energy. Use that energy on growing yourself for sure. Um, talked about calendar. Let me, I forgot to write out a time or an outline, guys. Um, talked about calendar. We talked about the 80-20 principle. We talked about everyone's different, different mentalities. What am I missing here, Jim? Oh, 
I know what I was going to touch on too. What happens So my dad's having surgery on Thursday, it looks like. I'm going, yeah, I'm going to their house Wednesday. Dad's having surgery on Thursday. What happens if there's a major complication and my dad need, and my mom needs me? What do you think the, the, the first thing I'm going to do is? Cancel everything and be there? Maybe. Call Harry. What did I say at the beginning? Replace it. Yes. So be careful. It's not just canceling. See, when you cancel something, it means that you didn't accomplish something. And that's where frustration can also come in. So be careful just simply canceling. Like I might cancel or Candy Crown is she's going to be replaced. PC orientation, I'm going to send an email to leadership saying I can't take a call. I can't take a call. Don't schedule anybody for me. Sam is a one-on-one -on -one from Atlanta. I'm going to replace that with her because she's owed that time. Scripts, probably canceling because we're going to do it again on Monday. It's kind of already replaced. Lead generation, same thing. I'm just going to get somebody else to do that for me. But you hit the nail on the head, Darby. Don't just cancel it. When something comes up, you have to replace it. It's the way to create happiness and time blocking. It's the way to create happiness and life and sanity. When you cancel it, it means you, you, you didn't take the time to just reschedule it. Take that time to reschedule it. If something happens awry and I start to worry about my dad, that means I'm putting energy where energy is not due. I can't worry about my dad. I can't help him. I'm not his body. I'm not his, his organism, his uh, or immune system. You know, the doctors have that. I'm not trained in that. It's something I can't control. Let God do it. What I can control is replacing. And then that means when I go to help my father, I don't have all these things lingering over my head about how I need to reach out to everybody that I canceled with. The, the, the replacement's already in process. I sent everybody an email. Hey, let me know what, what day works best for you next week. Here's my time. So da, 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 da. It's off. Now I focused on my family. That's the key to the happiness around time blocking. But be methodical about it. Don't just wake up and say, well, today I'm going to work on X, Y, Z. That is just, it's just a bunch of, it, it, you're, you're going to spin your circles. You're going to go nowhere. And then you're going to get desperate. You're going to get desperate. What happens when you get desperate, Jimmy, Darby? I typically don't do anything. And just to be transparent with this group, my relationship with time blocking is uh, an evolving one. Um, there have been times where I wasn't realistic. There have been times where I didn't give myself grace and I got super frustrated and but I, I can't speak for Darby or the group, but analysis paralysis <clears throat> is something that certainly has affected me where I'm like, oh, I have to get all this stuff done. Then you don't do anything. And in those moments where you don't feel like doing anything, you can, you can still do something. And so uh, uh, Bruce touched on this a little bit, but when you, um, when you are time blocking and you're being realistic and you're saying, okay, I'm going to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. I mean, Bruce has seen me practically crash out on a couch and still lead gen from my phone, you know, because <clears throat> it's not that hard to do when you're in it. And, and once you find a rhythm and you find, okay, this is working for me, um, sticking to it is incredibly powerful. Bingo. So that's the last point I want to touch on. We can't control, we can't control our emotions. Sometimes we can do some things to help ourselves out. Um, but um, a lot of times, just like, un, just like outside events or uncontrollable events that happen around us, it's very similar to sometimes our mood, our mindsets and our other things, right? Um, we're not going to talk about exercise and, and that sort of thing. That's when that life by design class. But the last thing I want to touch on is whenever you are down and out and frustrated or whatever it is, the first thing you got to do is try and push aside that because you're wasting precious, precious brain space. The second thing you need to do is if you're in those moods, if you're in that mindset, and I don't even want to call it mood and mindset. We all get sick. It's just kind of human, right? COVID's going around right now. When I am sick, 
I still have to get two hours of lead gen in a day. Because if I don't, then it means four hours the next day. And the next day I might still be sick. So what can you do and what can you, what can you focus on when you're in there? So if I say, okay, Tuesday, Tuesday was my open house and lead follow-up day. I love Tuesdays for that. Mondays were my spear. So if on Tuesday I'm sick and I know that those are my days to call and lead follow-up, do not cop out and text message and email and, and do all of that stuff for lead follow-up. What I'll probably end up doing then on Tuesday is taking my two hour chunk and just continuing my sphere to the point where I wait until I'm in that right mindset and mood to do lead follow up. Cause you have to be on your A game around the people you don't know or the people that you're going to start working with. That slip up is crucial. Be careful with that. So when you're sick, when you're down, when you're out, do the lead generation activities that you already are going to do and just replace it with something else in that week. So I'm a handwritten note guy. I love handwritten notes. It gets my mojo going, but handwritten notes for me are my, are my, are my days or my moments that I don't feel like being super proactive and sharp on the phone. Because on, with a pen and time, I can just write that handwritten note out. I can be sicker than a dog and still get five to 10 out in a half an hour to an hour. And that's still lead generation. And then that way, when I'm in the afternoon curled up in a ball sicker than a dog, I still feel like I got my day done and I didn't back my week up. There are times I've been sick and, and, and down and out and deaths in families and you know deaths in, in you know everything where you're not gonna do anything. Don't get me wrong. There are extremes that you have to still be human and have to embrace and, and feel emotion and grieve and be sick and, and do all of that. Don't get me wrong, but you'll know those days. And if your business planned right and you hit 85, this is something that other people don't know too. If you hit 85% of your 20% throughout the year, you most likely will only be within about 5% of your goal. And sometimes, and oftentimes, if you hit 85% of your 20% activities, most of the time you actually do hit your goal. So that means that there's about 15% of the time in, this, in, our, in our year, our month, our week, that we can have those sick days where we absolutely don't do a thing. The key is though, if you're sick for four days in a row, Mark my words, there's hardly ever any like back to back to back to back four days where you're just bedridden because then you probably need to be going to the hospital. So be careful having the sniffles and copping out. Or if you do, just know that you that you are you're just playing the law of the numbers and that you can't be frustrated when your business slips. It's the hardest thing about being self-employed. We have flexibility on our schedule, but we also have the the higher, the higher attribute of being, or what am I looking for? We have the discipline of creating our schedule. We have the flexibility in creating our schedule, but we also have to, we can't trick ourselves into being frustrated when we don't do the activities. Because if you're frustrated because you're not doing the activities, you're wasting brain space, just get after it and do it. Or quit for the day and go, just go, just go be. There's, there's no reason to me why you guys should be spending all day being frustrated with yourselves. Let it go or take action two choices. What's that bold law? You can have reasons or results. You can't have both. And that one really, really, really seems true to me. Uh, my other one is just like what Melissa said. This was, this was, man, this was on my wall. I mean, this is just plastered in my brain. People need to be reminded far more than people need to be instructed. Now take the inverse of that. We need to be reminded far more often than we need to be instructed. So remind yourself. Don't get frustrated that you have to remind yourself. Don't get frustrated that you have to tweak your schedule and your plan. Just do it. Because we all need to remind ourselves every time, every day, right? Cool, guys. That's all I have for you. Any questions on time blocking? Do you guys, I, I, was, I was thinking about going into the, uh, the to-do list and breaking up the day. But to be honest with you, it's time blocking, fail safes, 
creating those plans. You know, when I get a new lead, I mean, there's probably six things that happen, but the first things that happen are probably the top 20%. I go right into my calendar and I set whatever that expectation was. So if the expectation is that I'm gonna call you in the second week of January, I'm gonna put, like you guys get, uh, hold on, let me see. Oh no, I, can't, I can just show you guys my calendar. That, mm -hmm. Remember how you guys saw can't call Candy Crown on the 7th? Candy Crown is also in my calendar on the 21st. Oh, sorry, you guys aren't even looking at my calendar. Um, can't call Candy Crown is also in my calendar on the 21st. I told her I'd call her the second week of, or the first week of January. But if I fail to do that, I'm gonna call her the second week. And the chances of her remembering are, are slim or you know whatever. She just expects me to call her, right? So create your fail safe. That's part of the time blocking. That's part of the frustration. So for me, they go right into my calendar. All lead follow-up, especially the first follow-up. So I get the lead and then I have to set the expectation to follow. Especially that first follow-up probably goes in my calendar twice. Then if I looked at my reminders right now, I'll just do it for live thing purposes. I would imagine I have call Candy Crown in here twice because it's just part of my schedule. Call Candy Crown on the 6th. In my calendar, it said call Candy Crown on the 7th. On the 12th, it says call Candy Crown at 8 a.m. So now I have four things in my, in my calendar, in my email system. Guess where else I have it? I have it in my pipeline when I entered Candy into my pipeline. And I don't think I do this very well, but I, I should have this. She's in my CRM and I probably should have a task in my CRM to follow up with her. I, I gotta be honest with you guys, I started, I wish, you know how they say you can't teach old dogs new tricks? I am so, I struggle with CRMs because I started where there was no such thing as a CRM. You guys have this beautiful system that I just wish my brain would use. Um, but because it doesn't, I gotta do all these other steps and I just, like Darby said, she uses three calendars or whatever. It's part of my process. Use those things, figure out your niche, figure out those things. Something else that I kind of do, like I said earlier, I do those two reminders, two calendar invites, put her in my pipeline, put her in my CRM. And if it's a brand new lead that I made hardly any connection with, I use the post-it note system. I just put a post-it note with her name on it right on my computer. And then once a week, I just read around my computer. And I'm like, oh crap, that person. Um, but you will fail. There's a reason why my email signature says fail forward and fail often. The, the more you fail, the more system, the, the more you'll hone in on your system. If you guys need help, Harry, Jimmy, and I, we're all here to help you. We've all been through it. Um, and, and don't let it be a pain. I used to get so fresh. I used to beat myself up all the time. Bruce, why can't you remember these leads? my God, you had a great connection with them. Why can't you remember these people? It's just because we got to talk to more people. See, I was doing the right thing on the one hand. I never had an issue with, con with contacts. I, I was a contact machine. I, I don't know why, but that philosophy, I, I learned right off the rip. It just, it set with me very well. That I'm timid, I'm shy, I need more contacts than the average agent. Um, and so that's what I did. But again, that's where, I would stink at the reminder system. So I had to develop it, develop your own and yours will be different. Some people need three calendar events. Some people need to color code their calendar. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I've seen this and I, I don't know how many of your spouses are down for it, but um, I went to a family reunion one time and what they do is they set up this system with their spouse. It's called a pain versus pleasure um, you set up something with your spouse and you say, Hey honey, all right, I need you to help me in my business. Cause I lack in this area. I need to call so-and-so on this day. If you remind me to do that, we can do X, Y, and Z, or I will do X, Y, and Z for you. I'll give you an hour massage. I will blah, blah, whatever that is. Right. Use your kids, use your family. Darby did it. That's called time blocking. What'd you do, Darby? Share, share it to the recording. I didn't hit stop. Oh my gosh. I don't know what I was thinking. I posted all these little houses on a whiteboard 
And I brought my oldest, who has a memory of an elephant. She remembers everything. And I said, okay, if I sell this many houses, we're going to Disney World. I did that in September, and I haven't sold any. And she's on me so much that it, like, breaks my heart when I'm like, well, I haven't sold anything. So it's still 20 homes away. Um, 16, actually. It's 16 homes away. We know exact number. Um, and she reminds me constantly. So I encourage you. I see the frustration. I see the devastation. I see things in your eyes right now. Oh, I could cry. It breaks my heart because I'm like, well, honey, I'm trying to pay bills first and then we could do this. But she knows exactly how many houses and she'll look at it all the time and she'll say, look, nothing's moved. Thanks, Mika. Awesome. Sorry. And, and, yeah, and Darby sent me a text yesterday. I'm not going to share it with everyone. <laughs> Darby sent me a text yesterday. And it shows me that she's pushing her emotions aside. Every single part of that text, and it was a long text, every single part of that text was action driven. It was her pushing her emotions and frustration aside. She shouted it on Facebook. I didn't even tell her to do half of what she's doing. She shouted it on Facebook, 24 open houses by her birthday in June. I'm going to tell her to do 30. Like 10 kind of fighting right now. So it may happen really quickly. Exactly. I posted it everywhere and I didn't, re I didn't expect the results. So okay. now she has opportunities for you guys to do open houses because she's not going to be able to take all of them. And the more she puts herself out there, the more people are just going to go to her and say, hey, Darby, you want to do an open house again? She's being methodical. She's taking control of her business. And that's what time blocking truly, truly is. We don't take control of it enough because we have so much flexibility. I don't know about you guys. I work retail. I was told when I needed to clock in. I was told when I was late. And I was told when I was going to get fired if I was late too many times. We don't have that luxury anymore. That was a luxury. And we looked at that as a burden when we had our other jobs. That actually was a luxury because it held us accountable in those things. We never wanted to lose that. We're much more willing to let ourselves down than we are others. I don't want to end on that note. Anybody got a quote or something? <laughs> no, we'll end on that note because it, it does need to be serious. Go ahead. Through the chaos, I always think of like this thing I heard, it's inch by inch, life is a cinch, but yard by yard makes life hard. So like in the scheduling chaos and sometimes like this big picture chaos that I'm trying to do and envision, I'm just like, what do I need to do today? What do I need to do today? Which piece of paper is most important? Which call is most important? Um, and I just break it down into like little bits. And that's yep. how. What's the other, what, let's end on this one. And, and I don't know the whole phrase, but um, we underestimate what we can do. We overestimate what we can get done in a year, but we underestimate what we can get done in a decade. Ooh, Perfect. I like that. Yes. Huh. I I, no, cool. I think it's the opposite. We underestimate what we can get done in a year. Ma many of us underestimate what we can get done in a year. We just, we just don't know how to put forth that effort. And we're we not as serious with ourselves. Yeah. What's that? He said, or we do know, and we just don't because we mind block ourselves. No, you're right, Jimmy. We overestimate what we can do in a year. I think the, the biggest thing, if, if the more you know, I think about it, I hate that quote. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of rough. Um, but no, I, the, the, the biggest thing about time blocking is it doesn't work unless you do, just like everything else in this industry. I've sat and let my calendar ring alarms and ignored them. And I've waited with anticipation and gone, oh, sweet. This is coming up in my calendar, you know, so. Ooh, that's another good point. I love all these little tips, Jimmy. Good job. Um, how many of you guys have uh, notifications for your calendar come up on your phone, on your computer, things like that? How long have you had those notifications going on? Take them off for take them off for a week or a month. 
they became, if you guys have had them on for probably, probably more than a couple of months, I guarantee, I almost guarantee their background noise or they became habitual. If they're habitual, leave them. I are those, not those notifications became background noises for me. And as soon as I turned them off, I didn't realize how fast I went into panic, panic mode. And now I operate where it's off. That's why I look at my calendar every single day. I have two monitors. I, I had to go out and buy another monitor. I'm probably going to get a third monitor just so one monitor is my calendar. Isn't that, isn't that so stupid? I'm not willing to spend $12 on a, uh, on a paper calendar and just set it beside me. I'm going to go out and spend $100 on a monitor just so I can have my computer. But to me, that's so worth it. Anyways, man, we could talk about this all, all day. Any questions? <clears throat> Guys, make it a rocking, rocking New Year's. Happy New Year's. And I will see you guys bright. Oh, I won't see you guys bright and early. I got good news, you guys. I got really, really good news. Um, uh, like I mentioned in my email, um, KW uh, Regional is working on um, putting PC programs together for the region. And they've never done that before. And after I sent that email out to you guys yesterday, I got another email saying, you better be prepared to speak a lot on Monday. So I have a meet Monday meeting with the region. Um, Keller Williams numbers are all, um, they're all, what do you call it? They're all public. You guys can see everybody's numbers. You guys know that you guys can see everybody's production levels, no matter who you are. Um, and so the region can pull off my numbers um, happy to say we have we have grown 400 percent in transactions as well as people in the program and they want to um, talk to me about stealing my my system and model so bear with me I'm probably I'm probably going to be um, I, I probably need a vote I probably will I'm masterminding I'm thinking about a few things 